In the late 1980s, or rather the late 1970s, the Nordbergring Nordschleife was going through a bit of a difficult time. A lot of number of crashes were occurring that were claiming lives and causing high profile accidents, one of the most famous being Nicky Lauda back in 1976. Change needed to happen. And sure enough, the directors of the Nürburgring responded and created this track we're at tonight, which is the Nürburgring GP for round one of season 18 here at Next Gen for the Megan Trophy. I'm certain it's going to be an absolutely fantastic race tonight for Lobby 2. I'm Jack TM53, your commentator for tonight and for the season as well. I've got a lot of interesting facts and stats to go through throughout the season. I'm fairly certain of that, and I'm no that the racing is going to be excellent as it always is we've got 11 drivers in for season two or rather season 18 concurrently with next gen at the moment 11 drivers in for the lobby hopefully all will be able to arrive tonight we'll go through the drivers at the moment who are in the lobby so we'll start off with 1805 whereabouts is 1805 he's somewhere on my list and he's gone straight past it there he is, he's in the Frugal Gaming car this season, he was racing in the Steel Seal car, not this season, he's in a new one, and it's a cracker delivery, that number 18 driver obviously, hopefully no doubt will be aiming for some good results. Good evening, yeah, good evening to you Greener Army, and as well for R4, <laughs> I'm not saying all of your all your name, that's ridiculous. <laughs> we got D.90 as well. Hello to you. Hello to the three commenters and everyone else who's watching currently at the moment. It's going to be an absolutely fascinating race. A few in support for a couple of drivers who I will mention shortly as well. We've also got Danzo. He's back for this season. Where is Danzo on my list? He's going to be... I've just gone past him. There he is. Next gen Danzo. He's back in his tank tools car and I'm fairly certain he'll be aiming to try and beat those top five positions that he got last season in Lobby 2 see how he gets on this time around Sabertus as well is back skip forward there is Sabertus in the Fuchs car the number 23 he's back he'll be aiming to get another podium like he did last season at Suzuka he, when he came second in that incredible race he's all over the curb as he comes out of the hairpin though got to make sure he doesn't crash Tinny Tortoise one of the comments <laughs> commenters at the bottom there as you can see, a few Carrington, D-Dot as well. They're supporting the CRT boys. We'll go down to Tinny Torso. So here he is. He's in the pit at the moment in the sales eye car. Made his debut last season at Goodwood, the final round. And was running in the top 10. So hopefully he'll be able to be putting in some competitive performances tonight. Shadowstalker's back as well. I'm fairly certain he's going to be in around fifth place somewhere. There he is in the Geising car. Let's see how he gets on. Snav as well. Probably the best driver not to win a race. 1805 just put a comment in saying what time we're we starting. Pretty soon I'm going to do my intro first, <laughs> to say the least. Snav's there. Coleman is in as well for tonight. As Snav does a big slide. There as he goes through the corner. There's Coleman in the pit lane at the moment. D. Whitehouse, arguably the pre-season favourite. He had three race wins last season. He rounded off the season with a victory at Goodwood. He'll be hoping to do the same again in the Hampshire car. We've got Chris Cross as well in a Zerko Tech car. He's in for tonight too. Timmy DJ G94 in the works car. See how he gets on tonight. I'm very certain there's some good performances ahead. A couple of comments there, just looking through them at the moment. Greener Army. Feels very strange watching it not right yet. Yeah, it's not the same without you, John. It's not the same without you, it has to be said. And another driver who's not here at the moment is Glock, but at this moment in time, we're going to have to exit out of the commentator. We're going to go into race settings and we're going to get things started. So we'll get that started. There we go. 10 minute qualifying session and we will get on with it very, very shortly. There we go, qualifying now has begun. The drivers have got 10 minutes. For those that are new watching and are curious in how the settings work for this season, for season 18, the same as last season. It's a very good formula. The cars are limited to about 350 horsepower, rear wheel drive, effectively, these cars. They are fantastic beasts. There's a bit of 
good bit of aero on these cars as well. I've got a couple of cars just going out on circuit. Timmy DJG94. I'm just going to call him Timmy. Got to be careful that those two don't show up next to each other on track. Timmy and Tinny. That could be a nice pairing <laughs> for the future. So that's the qualifying format is 10 minutes. The race is 20 minutes long. And there are some top four reverse grids coming later on in the season rounds three six and nine that's when we'll be having the top four in the championship reverse grids the drivers don't have to worry about that tonight though obviously because it's completely equal all starting from zero and i'm fairly certain the drivers will be gunning to try and get a very good result in the opening round of the season we're just watching timmy djg go around turn seven herpin there coming up towards a legendary schumacher s Obviously, after Michael Schumacher, seven-time Formula One world champion, and coincidentally the uh, lap record holder uh, around the Nurburgring GP variant, so appropriately named uh, for the the wonderful driver. Hopefully, he, he gets better soon. Obviously, after his horrible accident he had a number of years ago. We've got Danzo there just jumping through. <laughs> Those are people going for a greener army, saying he's got great hopes for Shadow Stalker. A, per a personal favourite, a fan favourite Shadow Stalker. He always, always finds himself in positions where you go, hang on a sec, he's up, he's right up there. But we definitely hope that he can hit the heights that he hit last season. He had three top tens last season in the season 17 lobby two season. So hopefully he'll be able to improve on that. Maybe get a well, he should hopefully get a season best tonight because there are only ten cars in the lobby at the moment couple of guys in there obviously supporting the CRT drivers and I'm fairly certain they're going to be doing some good action outlaps have been completed we come down this first main straight the GP circuit was opened in 1984 for those that are wondering and it's had a couple of changes over the years this being one of them the Mercedes arena this is effectively known as we'll just ride as a cone in the middle of turn two for some reason this is the Mercedes Arena, effectively. There's a spectator section on the left-hand side. It'll swing into view now. There it is. That was opened in 2001. It used to be quite a quick chicane uh, back in the day, back in the late 90s, but they obviously expanded it a bit further. And Shadowstalk has picked up a little penalty for that. little incursion there going through turn number four. Let me just watch the drivers coming through now. Shadowstalk is trying to clear. There's 18.05. Just coming through there, Sabertus. It's Tinny Tortoise coming across the line to start his lap. See how he gets on. Snav just coming on as well to his lap. One to watch for this season is Snav. Like I mentioned earlier, he's probably arguably the best driver not to have won a race last season. Snav, he had a number of races where he was leading, unfortunate not to win. Fuji stands out in particular. And he was really unfortunate in that race. Just got caught by Carter Boy 99 in the end and dropped down to third place and snav had three podiums last season so he's hoping no doubt to try and get onto the winners rostrum this season let's cut forward to timmy timmy's a debutante for this season hasn't had an appearance at all he's brand new he's fresh to the league and it looks like he's going to be the first driver to set a lap time so he's getting the ball rolling already what's his first lap going to be as he comes across the line it's a two minute point eight. That's not bad at all from Timmy. Here comes Danzo now towards the checkered, or well, rather the first lap. He's done a two minute three. 18.05 goes quicker. Only two temps behind. That's a strong lap from 18.05. Shadow Stalker now. What can he do? It's going to be a 2.05 just about. Crisscross now. What's that? It's a 1.59 flat from Crisscross. Setting the ball rolling immediately with that lap. Here comes Coleman now out of the final corner. It's going to be a two minute two suspecting. And in he goes up to fourth. Scrolling the way back through, we've got Sabertus coming through. What's he going to set? It's a two minute five? Two minute 4.9, just about gets in, just ahead of Shadowstalker. Good effort from Shadowstalker on his opening times there. Tinny Tortoise just coming up to the NGK chicane. Cuts his way through there in third gear. He's probably going to kick up to fourth and then down to third. As he comes to the hairpin, will he go to second? No, keeps it pinned in third as he comes around in the sales eye car. What's his lap time going to be? It's competitive. It's a 2 minute 4.7. He's ahead of Sabertus and Shadowstalker. Good effort from Tinny. Here comes Snav then. One of the pre-season favourites. 
and he does a two minute point five. He's right on the button already. Scroll right the way down because the last driver, our pre-season favourite, here comes D Whitehouse in the Hampshire car. We will ride on board with him for a lap of the Nürburgring in a moment once he gets through the chicane, which he has done. Navigates it pretty, pretty well, but he just gets a bit sideways on the exit. Crisscross with a cracking time. I must mention about Crisscross is that he was in Lobby 1 last season, but he's not going to be able to take part in all the events. So he's in Lobby 2, so I'm certain there's going to be some epic fighting with him involved. D Whitehouse is only sick, but we'll ride on board with him as he comes now towards Yokohama S for the start of this lap. Braking right the way down to second gear does D Whitehouse. Clips the corner at 45, then comes and swings the car back around to the right-hand side to turn two through the Mercedes Arena. He's in third at the moment, hit the apex well on the power nice and early as well was D Whitehouse. Kicks it down to two gears down into second, gets the car hooked in. He just needs to clip the kerb, which he does perfectly. Runs wide over the exit kerb. Whether it will give him a slowdown or a penalty for that, I'm not certain. As he comes now towards turn number five. He's four tenths up on his best lap. As he goes now into turn number six. Clips it in third gear a little bit early. Runs wide on the exit, but gets away with it. Now comes down towards the turn seven hairpin. Couple of lines through here. You can either go out wide and come in, or you can hug the line very tight. D Whitehouse elects to go with the tighter line. Slides to the back end now as he goes into the braking zone. Bertis has just done a two minute four. Danzo's done a two minute 1.5. So Danzo in the top five for now. Clips the Schumacher S curbs nicely flat in these cars. And then he comes up towards turn number 10. Let's see how Dave gets on through this car. I'm just going to call him Dave. It's easier to do. Third gear, nicely done. And then a tricky left turn 11 really and he gets his angles pretty well there and he's up he's 400ths up at the moment and he's on a purple sector so where will this put him in relation to crisscross once he gets through the ngk Kane? breaks at the 100 meter marker down into second runs a little bit deep but he might just about get away with it he's not on the grass nicely controlled from dave now into third gear for the final corner turn number 15 rounds it nicely done comes out of the corner will he get below the two minute lap time he should do and he goes second he's 400ths behind crisscross great effort from d whitehouse the Hampshire driver back with a bang and he's up into second he'll have time for one lap potentially two. Oh, that's a slide from d whitehouse an unforced error he just went over the curb there and it just spat him out he should have time to get another lap as I say, that's Timmy DJ. He's just gone up to third in the works car. Good effort from him. Snav there in fourth. He's setting a personal best so far in the first sector. Good effort from him. Here he comes now towards the Schumacher S. Flicks the car through. A couple of bites at the throttle there for Snav, but he got through fine. Up towards turn number 10. Breaking at about 130 mile an hour down into that left-hander. And then into turn 11. Nice camera angle, that has to be said, in third gear. And he's done quite well. So Bertis moves into eighth place. He's on a two minute two. Let's have a look at the gaps further down. He's 1.4 clear of Tinny Tortoise. He's six tenths clear of Shadow Stalker. This could be a fascinating battle to see during the race between Tinny and Shadow Stalker. I suspect those two are going to be together on circuit this season. That would be a good battle, I'm fairly certain of it. Timmy's in the pits, he's done. Versus there, he's about four tenths off Coleman. And it's eight tenths further forward for Danzo, he's in P6. Good effort from Danzo, he's three tenths up at the moment on what will be, no doubt, his last lap. There's 18.05. In the number 18, God, he just goes over the gravel there. He just saw it flick up as he went through the Schumacher S. We'll stay with him because him and the car ahead. I'm just trying to make out who that is. It is Danzo. I suspect those two are going to be the first drivers to see the shackered flag. Someone's going to make it through right at the end, and it is D. Whitehouse. I did say that before. So let's go to Danzo as he comes now into the NGK chicane, gets the car braked into second gear. Clips the apex relatively well to Danzo. Now he comes up into fourth gear down to third this is going to be his last lap what is the time going to be for Danzo it looks better 
comes towards the line as lap time's going to put him still sick if he goes quicker what about 1805 made a mistake somewhere he's not going to go and improve who else is on the lap we've got coleman yeah oh, he's just gone through the chicane that's not gone well for him i think that's shadow stalker coming towards the line now his best times are 205 and he's always 400th behind Tinny Tortoise. That's certainly going to be his rival this season. He's pulled over. He's done. So Bertis now, one of the final cars, I believe, to come across the line. Shadowstalker did go quicker on that lap by three tenths. Bertis is definitely going quicker. Puts him up to P7. Ahead of Jay Coleman. So everyone else now has seen the chequered flag. Criss Cross currently has provisional pole by four hundredths of a second. But this is the man we've got to watch. D Whitehouse is the only one now who can topple his time. Although, as I say that, there's someone who's just come through turn 11. A little bit further down the road. Is that Snav? It is. And Snav's given up on his lap. So it is just D Whitehouse now who can improve and potentially better Chris's lap time. What's his time? He's three tenths down. Coming into the final part of this lap. He's got to get the chicane right. Through the quick flick right at the Advan corner. Down into NGK. Backs the car in, arguably too much, and that's lap over. Round he goes, and Chris Cross has got his provisional pole into certain pole. There is your pole position, man. Chris Cross in the Zerkatech car. Great effort from him to be 400. So those two, D Whitehouse and Chris Cross, are quite some way ahead of Timmy and Snav. They're in their own little battle, only 500 between the two of them. 1805 is in fifth. He's got Danzo and Sabertis for good. We've seen great fights between Danzo and Bertis last season. So that's going to be really brilliant to watch. Coleman's there in eighth. Be interesting to see how Coleman gets on. He's down in eighth place. They could definitely expect more from Coleman. And then another battle to go ahead. Tinny Tortoise and Shadow Stalker. That's going to be fascinating to see. But that's your qualifying over. Crisscross on pole. 400th separating him and D Whitehouse as we go into the race. So there we are. We've got the Zerkatech driver on the right hand side of the grid. There's the Amsha driver on the left of Chris Cross and D Whitehouse, respectively. Timmy, DG, and Snav, watch out for them behind. See how they get off the line as we head now for the first race of the season at the Nurburgring. Here come the numbers. And the race is live here in the Nürburgring. He's got the best start. Chris Cross has got a great start. As so has Timmy DG as well. I've said DG, but it doesn't matter. As we come down towards turn one, D Whitehouse is on the right, left-hand side as we look at it. Oh, bit of contact. 1805 went for a gap that was sort of closing, but he's got himself up into fourth. Snav and D Whitehouse have made contact going through turn two, but D Whitehouse is in second. There's Snav in third. Timmy's dropped to fourth. Burtis is all over the place. He's off the... Off the road there, he's in 7th place by the look of it, 1805's cut him off, Tinny Tortoise is up to 8th, Danzo's gone down to 9th, didn't quite see what happened there at the start, not gone well for Danzo, but that is it at the moment, Snav's all over the grass at the moment, Timmy's got a 5 tenth penalty, but that is it at the moment, Chris Cross has got himself an almost 1 second lead as we go through turn number 6 there. Eight tenths is the gap. Then it's a second back to Snav. He's got to watch out for Timmy, who's just right behind him. Timmy will no doubt know where to clear his penalty at some point. Then there's Coleman. He's under pressure from 1805 in the frugal car. Then there's seventh for Bertus and Danzo. That's going to be interesting to see. Dini Torso is right on the back of them at the moment. And Shadowstalker in tenth in the Geisen car. I'm going to just cut forward very quickly where we can. I'm going to back out just so we can get all of the information. There we go, straight back to it. We get all the camera angles. We'll ride on exterior camera. Coleman's up to fifth after his starting down in eighth. He's got 1805 on the outside for turn 11, but not quite going to make it. Looked like there was a bit of contact there, but nothing doing. Coleman stays in front. Bertis is there in seventh. The front two are already up the road. They've gone. They've left Snav by two seconds. Timmy's in fourth. There's Coleman in fifth. So good start for Coleman then. He's got 1805 all over the back of him. Looked like there was contact maybe or a bit of lag. Something going on. It's 1805. Goes wide. Where's Bertus? 1805 can't shut the door now. The Fuchs driver trying to go around the outside. But 1805, I don't know whether he meant it, but it was good defensive driving from 1805. He stopped Bertus from turning in. 
Banzo's watching this as well. He's going to be looking with interest. Shadowstalker and Tinny Tortoise are in 9th and 10th at the moment. So they've swapped places. Bursus is on the inside. We'll stay with Danzo watching this. Good lunge from the Fuchs driver. Danzo's made his move as well, but they both run wide. They're going to be side by side going through turn two. 18.05 is already ahead of them. Danzo's currently 7th, but Bursus gets in front again. Good driving from these three. Oh, almost Bursus immediately going back on the attack. Couldn't quite make that. And Coleman has run a little bit wide. So now this is a four-way scrap already for fourth place. Danzo and Bertis already hammering tongues within the opening couple of minutes. There's Shadow Stalker just on the back of these. Tinny Tortoise is there in 10th as well. Hopefully he'll be able to keep on the back of Shadow Stalker. We'll see any progress from him further on. Snav's in third. There's the two alternative lines I was talking about before in qualifying. Criss Cross taking that wider line. D White has taking the tighter one. Both choosing their own preferences there. But it's Criss Cross who's currently in lead. Eight tenths to D White House. We'll just cut to the external cameras. And it's a good start so far for these two. Managed to get away well and got off into the distance. Snav's there in third. He's got a gap to Timmy. And then there's another big gap back to 1805. He's up to fifth. Coleman's gone off somewhere. I made a mistake as he's now side by side with Bertus as they go through turn 11. Is there a room or a gap for Danzo? There might be. We'll cut back with Danzo. Who I suspect may as well just be equipped with a permanent camera car at the moment because there's a lot of fighting going on around him. Bertus now going for the inside as he wards NGK. He's alongside enough. Coleman gives him the room. Good clean driving from Coleman. Looks to do the switch back. Bertus is off. Danzo's done just enough to get past Bertus. I thought there was going to be contact. Bertus, though, trying to go around the outside of the Fuchs car. Is he going to make it round? Not quite. It was asking a lot of him. But he's still there in eighth place. He's still on the back of these guys. Already, though, 1805 has pulled away. Criss Cross has already set the fastest lap of the race on a 59 1. That's competitive. But the Frugal Gaming car is off and up the road. Timmy's there in fourth at the moment. He's doing quite well. Has to be said, on his debut, good showing from him at the moment. He's just shadowing Snav at the minute. So that's a good effort from him. D Whitehouse is just holding on to Criss Cross at the moment. Don't forget Criss Cross was a Lobby 1 driver last season, in Season 17. Criss Cross obviously has the credentials. He did have one top five last season in Lobby 1 to Criss Cross, so he's definitely no slouch. Be interesting to see how he gets on in the races that he's able to participate in. Five minutes, effectively, of the session gone. And that's your top three. Crisscross, Cross, D Whitehouse and Snav. Timmy's there in fourth. 1805's fifth. We'll cut back to Danzo and to Bertus now because these three, with Coleman as well, will no doubt be battling hard as they come now down into turn seven at the hairpin line of stern. All drivers having some form of red variant for their livery. But nonetheless, they all look great. The Fuchs, the Teng Tools car and the 3M car. That's Coleman going wide through... Set Schumacher S, he's a bit squirrely. Here comes Danzo. Is he gonna be long? Is he gonna be close enough for a lunge? He thought about it, he's there, but he's not quite. He's got to be careful of Bertus here. Bertus just shadowing the back at the moment of these two. And he's got a very good exit coming out of turn eleven as well. Here we go then, down towards the turn twelve of Advan. Danzo's gotta give him the room because he's there and he does. Ten tools on the left, Fuchs on the right side as we look at it. As they come now into the breaking. Danzo should, in theory, get this one covered off, which he does do. Good clean driving again from these two. Oh, Bertus again. Just a little bit hasty on the power. Almost lost the back end. It keeps it in a straight line. Shadowstalker's done a great drop job so far. He's just hanging on to the back of them. As is Tinny Tortoise. Has to be said, the pair of the, these two... You know, we suspect these two are going to be rivals for the season of Shadowstalker and Tinny Tortoise. Good effort from these two, just to hang on for the time being in the opening stages. Versus though, still in 8th place. He's missed the apex there at Turn 1 at the Yokohama S. He's got to try and just compose himself. Because we know Bertus has got the speed. We cut a little bit further forward now as Timmy has closed the gap to Snav. We look at the lap times last time out. And Timmy almost getting himself into a low 2 minute lap time. He did 2 minute point five flat effectively. So good effort from him. He's still got that half a tenth penalty that he needs to try and shift someone. That's D Whitehouse who's gone off. D Whitehouse has gone off the track somewhere. I suspect he's lost it on the gravel. Timmy's going to get past him as well as Snav. 
And that is D. Whitehouse down into fourth place. It's contact at the hairpin. D. Whitehouse trying to get his way back through. Fortunately, we don't have a replay camera for that. Timmy slowing down, lets D. Whitehouse through and cleared a little bit of his penalty conveniently at the same time. But D. Whitehouse makes a mistake as he was in his pursuit of crisscross. He must have lost it at turn six. We saw him rejoining at an odd angle. And he'd be kicking himself all Dave now. He's got to try and re regroup and get back up to second. He's got the pace to do that. He's got the fastest lap as well. We'll just cut to the external cam with Dave. See if he's got a run on Snav. It doesn't look like he has. Well, that mistake has dropped them almost eight seconds, effectively eight seconds now, away from Crisscross. And if Crisscross can do what he needs to do, is Snav goes a little bit wide there. Got a little bit squirrely. D. Whitehouse on the outside. Will he switch back? He looks to do so. Clean and cut. Bit of contact as they come through the corner. But D. Whitehouse was there. He had the move effectively done. And D. Whitehouse back up to second now. Snav in third. Snav potentially looking to try and get another move up the outside. Going into Yokohama S. Not quite. Looks to switch the car back. He's got a very good exit as Snav. And now he's going to be on the outside for turn three. It's going to be... Almost Hamilton-esque if he could pull this off. D. Whitehouse on the kerb and Snav does the move. And he covers the inside brilliantly and he's back up to second as Snav. I said it had to be Hamilton-esque and he's done exactly that. Anyone who's wondering about that, Hamilton did that move a good number of years ago around Vettel there. And Snav has done the move to D. Whitehouse. Set it up brilliantly through Yokohama S. Dave though not giving up. Going through now, turn six. Snav's run deep into the corner. There's room for Dave. He's on the inside. It's going to be a drag race now down towards turn seven at the hairpin. Is he going to get up to the inside? He's still there. Snav breaks later, but I think he's ran too deep into the corner. He's still there, though, on the outside. He's got a good exit. The pair of them are going to be side by side going towards Schumacher S. Are they going to pick, pull out of it? No, there's a bit of contact between the two. And Dave slots back into third. Timmy's got a great run, though, and he's lined it up brilliantly through the Schumacher S. He's going to be on the inside as they go towards turn 10. That's moved. Done. He's break too late. There's contact between him and Snav. And he backs out of it, rightfully so. He just got his braking wrong, did Timmy. And now it's an absolute free car fight for the second step on the podium. Chris Cross is gone. He's up the road. You can already see already up through the final corner what a fight this is though at the moment i have to say whilst we're watching this tinny tortoise is up to eighth not sure what's happened to danzo but tinny tortoise is in p8 great effort d whitehouse now looking to go up to the inside of snav snav shuts the door on him though and d whitehouse is gonna have to try and do another switch back is he gonna look to do so no not quite and snav